to this, by my perception, very important video. You may hear me speak about authority and the importance of having one's own dictionary. And a lot of folks, you know, who don't study correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, a lot of folks who only have basically a theoretical cognition of this technology don't quite comprehend why it's so important to have your own dictionary and they'll say things like well if everybody has their own dictionary how's anybody going to be able to communicate because the meanings of everybody's words are going to be different can't we just have one dictionary that we all use well folks by my estimation, that is fiction mentality because it's what they do now. You have your Webster's Dictionary, you have your Funk and Wagnalls Dictionary, whatever dictionary, your Oxford Dictionary, Styles Manuals. By the way, folks, I, I don't know if they do in, in modern day dictionaries, but in the old dictionaries, they would have a complete Styles Manual contained with the dictionary. And that's what I'm going to get at here today. Hopefully, I'm going to convey to you the importance of having your own dictionary when using correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Because if you are not the author of your dictionary, that document that governs your construct, then someone else is the author of your words, and someone else is your authority. It's a very subtle psychological condition of state giving up authority to someone else so let's not get ahead of ourselves here let's bring it back in i just want to say thank you for watching thank you for watching my content my comments videos my coral blade grotto broadcasts my shorts all that stuff i appreciate it Folks, we are so close to 6,000 subs. So close. I hope to break through this year to the 6K sub club, so to speak. It'd be so awesome for me to do that. It would be such an inspiration. But, you know, hey, I'm inspired to move on anyways and continue with this just because of the sheer number of high-level students that have been created over the last couple of years. Um, it's awesome. It's definitely something I never thought would happen a couple of years ago. Uh, I was pretty down on the whole thing a couple of years ago that people just didn't have the tenacity, the motivation, the gumption, the willpower, the shuspa, whatever you want to call it, to learn this stuff and actually use it. But there are folks out there with very strong personalities who have a volition to use this, have a volition to get closure and to create peace for themselves and navigate autonomously. I know that most of you watching this, uh, that's probably so far out of the domain of, of what you're thinking about right now that you have no idea what I just said maybe. But that's okay, man, because we all got to start somewhere. I was a beginner once, too. I really was. And although I do struggle to put myself in the shoes of the beginner, I try my hardest because I try to cultivate humility. Whether I succeed or not is completely upon you to determine or credential. That's, that's your perception of me. I have no stewardship of that. The only thing I have is the stewardship of my own vessel. And I'm going to bring it back down to Earth right now. Vessel Earth. A vessel in the sea of space. <clears throat> the critical importance of having a dictionary. 
Think of the word author. What does that mean to you? Just in plain, simple English, what is an author? Well, you think maybe it's an author of a book. Right, someone wrote a book in adverb or adjective pronoun. Cool. So that means then, by extension, they are the authority of that book because they authored it. It's the same thing with your dictionary and your grammar. You are the authority of that if you author your own dictionary. If you think a word, what does that word mean to me? And what meaning do I want it to convey and hold over the entirety of my construct, my biosphere? This cup, you see this cup? All right, this cup holds coffee right now. It holds a finite quantity of liquid. It's the same thing with words. They hold a finite quantity of value, and we bank that value in there. And then once that value has been banked, no more value can be put into it. It's topped off, it's done, finished, closure. Then this word vessel will hold that same value over every single contract, meaning it won't change its value from this contract to that contract. Meaning it won't mean one thing on my live life claim and then mean another thing on my quantum media treaty or whatever you want. <laughs> I'm just using a goofy example. See what I'm saying? It's one and one is one in correct sentence structure. One word, one meaning. Whereas if you look in the dictionary of the fiction, you have what's called definitions. DE means no, finite means a limit, right? And then ION means contract, so no finite contract. That's why you have multiple meanings for words in dictionaries. And that's how the slippery slope of grammar modification begins, pretty much. In correct sentence structure, that is not the case. There is no modification. One word, one meaning, one function, one congruency, so on and so forth. And so that's the importance of a dictionary. Because once you create your own dictionary, now you have a tool that governs your construct that you can depend upon. And anyone who wants to contract with you must agree to those meanings. Now, again, to go back to what I was saying at the beginning, people will say, well, then everybody's meanings will be different. How's anybody gonna be able to communicate or contract? Well, it's easy when you follow the ground rules and mechanics of quantum grammar, of which you can learn on this YouTube channel. There's about a thousand videos here you can study. It's all here for free. There are no secrets or tricks. Nothing is hidden. You can teach this technology to yourself on my channel, my gift to you. So, here we go. Here, here, I'm going to lay it on the line for you because there are no shortcuts. It's all blood, sweat, and tears and a huge investment of now space, i.e. continuum, energy, so to speak. So if you get two individuals who have two different dictionaries using correct sentence structure, hypothetically, because it's going to be very difficult to meet anybody that has their own dictionary, I can guarantee you that you, that's right, you watching this right now, I bet you don't have a complete correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar dictionary. I bet you don't. It's okay. It is what it is. So let's say, for example, hypothetically, that you have two contract parties with their own dictionaries. How are they going to contract? Well, easy. I mean, mechanically, it's easy. If they both follow the rules of correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar, meaning when they created their dictionaries and the meanings contained within those dictionaries, they followed the rules of parse, going back to the earliest nativity root meanings of the words. And then, you know, that's not the be all end all though, folks. I mean, if you need a word to mean something specifically for your contracts, you don't, you don't have to use the earliest nativity root meaning as the basis. 
you can use it maybe maybe you got it from Black's Law Dictionary maybe you got it from Webster's Dictionary or 1828 or, or something else or the Urban Dictionary I mean geez I, I've found myself over the years having to create finite means meanings for the word like casual in the sense of someone's a casual learner meaning they're not serious they're a casual or drama llama. I think I created a finite meme for that once as well. You are the ultimate authority of your dictionary and word meanings, but you have to keep in mind, are other folks going to be able to contract with you using the meanings that you have chosen to create? That's the big question. So when two folks come together with two different dictionaries, the first step is you have to, what, what contract are we doing here? What are we talking about? What joinder do we want to achieve with this contract? And once you establish that, then you write the contract, you co-write it, you co-author it. Then when you have that done, now you think about the meanings of the words in that specific contract. Do you meet with the other contract party? Do you agree on the meanings of those facts? Do you certify those facts? Because you may have to go and adjust the meanings in your dictionaries to coexist for that contract. Now I can tell you from experience that if these two individuals have closure on correct sentence structure, have created their dictionaries based upon the rules of correct sentence structure, that although the literal ordering of the words in the dictionary for the meanings may be different, the general overall meanings will be very, very similar. So it just takes a small amount of labor to adjust those finite means so that they're congruent. And now you can contract. No harm done. That's how it's done, folks. Now, let's get to it. What is the finite mean, the correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar, finite mean of dictionary? We only put words in our dictionaries that we use. Why would you put a word in a dictionary that you're not going to use in a contract? These are all contract words. And you determine whether they're used or not in your construct. I mean, it's just like diet, right? Myself, personally, I despise sweet potatoes. So sweet potatoes do not figure into my diet. I don't use them. But they may be a staple of your diet. That's good for you. No one, folks, please listen to this very carefully. No one, and I'll say it a third time, no one can tell you what words to contract with or not. You are the authority of that. I know there's folks out there that will say, goofy ass statements like now i don't know if this is this is uh the statement or not but they'll say things like this they'll say well there are only 200 contract words who the hell determines that what authority determines that and what gives them their authority do they have knowledge of correct sentence structure do they have closure on it probably not it's just like the folks that say it takes 200 hours to learn this Bullshit. That's complete and utter bullshit. Maybe some people, very, very few, can get closure on this with just a measly 200 hours of study. But most folks don't. Me, it took over 2,000 hours before I was even able to use this, and I still didn't have closure. All right? So you determine the meanings of these words. You determine how many contract words you use. It's you. You are the authority of your vessel construct. <clears throat> so if you want to use correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar, you must, in essence, become a lexicographer, create your own dictionary and your own styles manual. 
So here is my finite mean for dictionary taken from my co-dictionary. For the dictionary of this finite mean is with the claim of this contract, because everything is contract, with the conveyance of the contract terms, with the diction of the rules and codes and terms with the performance by this claim. Backwards for this claim of the performance is with the rules and codes and terms of the diction with the contract terms of the conveyance, with this contract of the claim, with the finite mean by the dictionary. There you have it. It's all about conveying the contract terms. It's all about the rules, codes, terms, conditions, all those things. It's a contract. Dictionary. What do we mean by diction? Well, I'm glad you asked. The diction of this finite mean is with this claim of the nativity writ with the conveyance of a performance with this command by a vessel and author and authority. For a vessel and author and authority of this command is with a performance of the conveyance with the nativity writ of this claim with this finite mean by the diction. Now I've told you what diction means. It's the conveyance of a performance with the command by a vessel author authority. Who's the authority? You are. Or in my case, me. That's why it's so important to have closure on these words, to have it here in your mind, so that you can be a steward or a commander of your mind vessel construct, because everything comes from here, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Now, I know there's folks out there that think otherwise. Uh, they'll try to say things like, you know, spirit and soul and things like that. But in correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, we put on paper what we can certify, what we can prove, not what we assume and presume. Okay? And so what we can prove and pretty much certify is that when we create things or think of things, it's centered here. It's centered here. It's not centered here or here or anywhere else or in this finger or that finger or wherever. It's here. It comes from here. This location, physical location. We can say that. And so we call that a mind. And when we say mind vessel, we mean mind and then this vessel that the mind is congruent with. We use that. So this is what diction means. And folks, as I'm going through here, I will tell you that in your dictionary, if you have a finite mean, you see these facts, like the fact, compound fact, finite mean, the compound fact, or I'm sorry, the fact claim, the compound fact, nativity writ, conveyance, performance, so on and so forth. All of those words would have to have their own finite means in the dictionary. So as you see, the more finite means you create, the more work you create for yourself. That's just how it goes until you exhaust all of these words. It's a lot of work. But I will say if you're serious about correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, you'll do it. So now let's talk about where does direction come from? How do you be a director of something? And what does that even mean? Well, for the direct of this finite mean is with the claim of this source authority with this conveyance by the author, i.e. for the author of this conveyance is with this source authority of the claim with the f this finite mean by the direct. So to direct something, you have to be the source authority, where the authority comes from, the author. Now you can direct where you want the vessel to go. You can pilot it. You're the master of the vessel. You're giving it direction. And what does direction mean? Direction is for the direction of this finite mean is with this claim of this source authority with this conveyance and with this performance of this vessel with the navigation function and rule by the vessel's authority. For the vessel's authority of the navigation function and rule is with this vessel of this performance and of this conveyance with this source authority of this claim with this finite mean by the direction. 
So to give direction to something, you must be the source authority of this something, and you must be able to convey the rules to be a steward or a master of the vessel and to be able to give a performance of where you want the vessel to go. Very important when you're creating document contract postal vessel court venues. Very important to have these closures on what these words mean. And I'm only giving you a fraction of these words. And hopefully, though, however, I'm giving you the full effect of how important it is to have these closures before you step into the quote-unquote line of fire. Bottom line, what is authority? Where does it come from? For the authority of this finite mean is with this claim of this power and stewardship and guidance, with the navigation and fate of the document vessels, with the certification by the author and creator. For the author and creator of the certification is with the document vessels of the navigation and fate, with this power and stewardship and guidance of this claim, with the finite mean by the authority. So authority not only means you're the author and creator of the document vessels, you are being a steward of the navigation of those vessels, the fate of those vessels. You have the power to steward and guide these vessels. Now, I know a lot of folks want to use the word control. But myself, I don't use that word because it implies coercion. And for me, it's the fiction system because the fiction system wants to control something. It implies getting something to do to perform against its will. You control someone, whether they want to do it or don't do it. You control it. That's, for me, that's no contract. That's a no-go. So I use words like power, stewardship, and guidance, which implies choice because contract is by consent. Anything else is an act of war and voids contract. Okay, but the important thing here is to know what the authority is, meaning you are the author of a thing, the creator of a thing. And if you're gonna create something and author something, you better well, better damn well know how to steward it and guide it and have the power to do so. A lot of folks throw this term around, fiction, but they don't really know what it means. And someone says, oh, fiction system. Oh, this is all fiction babble. Do they know what that means? Probably not. They probably cannot articulate it to you. Certainly not in correct sentence structure. Well, here's my finite mean for fiction. For the fiction of this finite mean is with the claim of this domain, with the structure of the conjecture, with the lack by a fact. For a fact of the lack, is with the conjecture of the structure, with this domain of the claim, with the finite mean by the fiction. So fiction is a domain. You have your domain of fact, you have your domain of fiction, and this is what the fiction is. It's opinion. It lacks facts. There are no facts. So that's the important thing is that it is a, it is a domain. There's no question as to where it is I've just told you. It's a structure of opinion. There's no proof. There's no continuance of the evidence. It's all opinion, i.e. conjecture, because it has no facts. That's what fiction is. It's very important to have this closure, especially if you're going to try and tell someone else that they're using this. And if you're going to tell someone else they're using fiction, then you better well know what a fact is for the fact of this finite mean is with this claim of this contract, because everything is contract, with the cognition of the whole, with the value of the matter, with the certification by the contract parties. For the contract parties of the certification is with this matter of the value, with this whole, of the cognition, with this contract, of the claim, with the finite mean by the fact. So now we're getting into banking. What are we banking? The value of the matter 
What is the value? It's closure. The cognition of the whole is the value of the matter. So if you have a cognition of the whole and everybody involved can certify it, i.e. the contract parties, now we have a fact. Now folks, you can have a fact for yourself that will not be a fact for other folks. And, and the example I use for that are ghosts. Say I've seen a ghost, my own self. I've witnessed a ghost. And I use this in my workshops as well. How would I be able to put the word ghost down as a fact as incorrect sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar? How do I certify that as a fact for myself? First of all, well, that's easy. How many senses do I have? Five or more senses, right? So if I see a ghost, that's one. If that ghost is making noise, if it's knocking stuff around or throwing books across the room, now I hear it, that's two. Two is certification. I use two of my senses to certify that ghost. Now that ghost can be a fact for me by these rules. And so I can put it on a contract that I have witnessed a ghost. Now, that may not be a fact for you if we are going to contract. If we're going to contract, and for whatever reason, we're going to use the word ghost on that contract, we're probably going to butt heads because you don't have the same experience as me, and I can't prove it to you. So therefore, we're not going to be contracting using the word ghost because you cannot certify it as a fact, whereas I can. Now, if I had video evidence of it, like I, I shot a video of it, and it's a really clear, high-definition video, you know, not these pixelated ones that are always out there. You know, they can take HD video of anything, and it's so crystal clear, but when it comes time to look at Bigfoot or a ghost or a demon or an angel, it's always real grainy and pixelated. Why is that? Some folks would say it's because you can't, you can't take uh, footage of the spirit world with the material, with the carnal world technology. Okay. Whatever helps you sleep at night. Point is, we have to prove these things as facts on paper. And if I cannot prove the word ghost to you as a fact, then you're not going to participate with it as a fact and it's off the table in our contract. Last but not least, I keep saying everything is contract, but what is a contract? For the contract of this finite mean is with this claim of this corporation, with the two vessels, or with the auxiliary vessels of the joinder, with this path, or with this treaty, of these joint tenants, with these states by the mind vessels consensus. Now, what was I talking about earlier about mind? Everything is centered in the mind, the formatory apparatus, and then that is the steward of the vessel, the body. That's what I mean by mind vessels. And then consensus, meaning agreement, consent. Contract is by consent. So when I say with the two vessels or with the auxiliary vessels, I'm saying that two or more vessels. You don't really use the word more in correct sentence structure, M-O-R-E, so I use auxiliary vessels. And that's what a contract is on paper with correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Again, if you're gonna create your own dictionary, you would have to have a finite mean for contract, for finite mean, for claim, for corporation, for two hyphen vessels, Auxiliary hyphen vessels, joinder, path, treaty, joint hyphen tenants, states, and mind hyphen vessels, hyphen consensus. You have to have finite means for all of those things. And then when you create those finite means, then you have to create finite means for the facts in those finite means. And you would use, I would, you know, I wouldn't limit yourself. Use every dictionary at your disposal. Um, use all the tools that you can to create a dictionary. My advice would be to keep it simple though. What I like to do with my correct sentence structure is I like to create a correct sentence structure 
have very detailed closure in the correct sentence structure, but yet have it be so simple that anyone can read it and glean the volition or the meaning behind the sentence. Meaning, you don't have to have correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, knowledge to know what the word contract means when you read this sentence. That's how simplified I like to make my sentences. I like to make them easy on the eyes, easy to understand, and very simple, but yet contain all the detailed closures. Because what is the point of this grammar, of this quantum grammar? The point is to create a geometric level playing field of communication that anyone can join in on. It's not to make something complicated or make something seem like it's out of reach or too detailed or too much work. I mean, it is a lot of work, but it is within your grasp if you want it. I know there's folks out there that try and make it seem really complicated and convoluted and mysterious and they put like a veil over it. Those are people that just want your money, folks. <laughs> they want to keep you coming back. They want to create a dependency of you upon them so that you have to keep paying money to learn this stuff and it never ends. It's a codependent type of scenario. Me, that's not what I'm doing. What I'm doing here is if you want to learn this, I will teach it to you and I will give you everything that you're willing to receive, that you're motivated to learn. And once you get that closure, you're out of here. You leave this port and you're on your own. You're autonomous. You don't have to depend on me for anything because I've given you everything that you need with this grammar to do what you're going to do with it or not. Okay. And I really mean that. And that's, that's how I've done it for six plus years, almost seven years now. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you have, I hope I have conveyed correctly how critical it is to have your own dictionary and have closure on the terms that you're using, especially if you're going to use this and walk into a foreign vessel and dry dock with your CPAT, C treaty, live life claim, favorite volition claim, port authority claim, whatever it is you're doing. You have to know what it is you're doing or things may not turn out the way you'd like them to.